Hi, this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, and this is episode 9 of the 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast, all about the internet on our Amigas. Uh, now, sometimes some people think it's kind of silly to worry about getting your Amiga online, because all of us have PCs, Macs, whatever, Linux machines that have a thousand times faster internet connections. And, uh, you know, new web browsers, they can go to any site they want to, no big deal at all. And that's okay, and I understand that 100%. But it is kind of fun, and it is a bit of a challenge to get your Amiga online, and there are actual valid reasons to do it. The first thing you need is a networking stack, or a TCP IP stack. Now, there's quite a few of them actually available for the Amiga. We've all heard of uh, Miami, which is no longer supported and no longer developed. Uh, there's Genesis that shipped with OS 3.5 and 3.9. Also, I think, no longer really developed. Uh, there is EasyNet, which is the one that comes with networking hardware when you order it from uh, Amiga Kit. Uh, pretty good I, from what I understand. And then there's my favorite one, which is Roadshow. Now, the first three are all graphics-based TCP IP stacks. They're fine, they're wonderful, but for the most part, they're a little slower and a little clunkier. You have to boot your Amiga, then you go into the app and you start your TCP IP stack and tell it to go online. And you wait for it to get online, and then you can do whatever you want to do. With Roadshow, which is an absolutely current and absolutely supported stack, you're just connected. You turn on, I turn on my Amiga, it's online. It is absolutely already connected to the internet, and I'm ready to go. I can launch eyebrows, I can launch whatever I want to do, and, and I'm just online. Slightly slightly more complicated if you're not familiar with the shell but really when you get right down to it you don't have to do too much once you install your networking card drivers which I'll show you a little bit on how to do uh, and once you edit one or two little files telling Roadshow how to handle your TCP IP stack there's very little that you have to do in the future to get it to work it just works web browsers, too. Uh, one of the most popular is iBrowse, which the latest version that is commonly available is 2.4 that was released in 2006, I'm 12, 13 years ago now. Uh, you, can, you can no longer register it legally, you can't buy a copy of it, uh, which is a whole half hour episode unto itself on why they can't figure out how to, you know, take 10, 15 bucks from, you know, hundreds or thousands of Amiga users, uh, you know, and it took them 12 years and they still can't figure out how to take your money and give you a key file. I don't know. Now, I understand that version 2.5 is in beta and some people have their hands on it and it's a pretty good uh, version and that version is going to be purchasable. But as of right now, you can download a, I think it's a 30 minute demo of, of eyebrows and uh, use that, then you close it down, launch it again, you can browse for another 30 minutes. Um, another fairly popular web browser is AWeb. AWeb's been around a long time, sort of still in development. Um, there's a version that came out in March 2018, but, but I don't know, I just, I, I've tried to use it, and it works okay, but it's not as fast as I browse. And when I'm going on certain sites, it's, it just throws a, more error messages at you. So I just, I just can't recommend that wholeheartedly. Uh, now, by far, the absolute best web browser that's available for the Amiga is NetSurf. NetSurf is a, an, an open license, open source uh, web browser that's available for like every platform that exists on Earth, including 68k Amigas. Uh, there's a couple of guys that put out a couple of versions of it. There's some slight differences between the versions. Uh, one of them requires an RTG card, retargetable graphics card to work. 
The other one works on AGA amigas. The caveat is you have to have an incredibly powerful amiga just to even be functional with NetSurf. Uh, from what I understand, uh, 64 megs of RAM is really the minimum. It'll work in 32, but 64 megs of RAM is, is the minimum, and that's okay. But you also need a nice, fast 060 processor. Uh, now, how does this work? Uh, Roadshow, you have to pay for it. $25, absolutely $25 well spent. Let me show you. Now, Roadshow, once you buy it, comes with a nice installation routine. Uh, it's just a, a, a normal installer. We've seen these a million times. Now, I've already got it installed in here, so I'm not going to truly reinstall it. Uh, but once it's installed, it takes and puts its proper components in the proper place. And then you've got just a little bit of work to do. What you need to do is in your devs folder, you're going to have two new folders, net interfaces, and internet. Those are the two that are going to show up in your devs folder. Now, net interfaces, this is a file that you copy over from your storage folder. Roadshow is going to put net interfaces under storage too, just like every other uh, Amiga program that, you know, has data types or DOS drivers. It puts extra components under storage that you have to move over manually if you need them. So if we look under net interfaces, we see we have interfaces for, uh, this is a 3Com card, there's a 2065 card, Ariadne, CNET cards, Mediator, MOS chip, uh, Prism, this is the one that you use with your Amiga 1200 wireless. So it's got a lot of them, including uh, the one that I use, which is the Xsurf. 100. Now, one thing that you might have to modify is your actual net interface here. All right? And the reason is, is because you may not always want to have your network use DHCP. So we're going to go into folder. Faces, and we're going to edit x surf 100. Now, this is the actual text file that goes along with that, that xsurf file under, under NetSurf. Now, I won't go into all of the, the details in here, but there are a couple of them that are important. You must either pick a fixed static IP address or configure equals DHCP. If you want to set your own IP address on your own local network, this is where you do it. You just remove the little remark, address equals, you put in your IP address, net mask equals, you leave that default, you rem out, configure DHCP. Um, the rest of these you don't really have to bother with. Then all of a sudden, your computer your Amiga is set statically using whatever IP address that you give it. Again, you'll probably never have to mess with these files, but they're there if you need them. Moving on to important things about iBrowse. iBrowse is the browser that I'm recommending to you, but straight out of the box, when you download it from AmyNet or wherever you get it from, it's not going to work very well. And that is because it does not have SSL certificates installed and configured and ready to go. SSL certificates, secure socket layer, they just basically verify whether a website is valid or not. Okay. So what you're going to need to do is install the Amiga version of SSL, which is called Amy SSL. 
Now I've already downloaded these and I'll put a download link to them in the description because they're kind of hard to find. And it's a little bit misleading. If you go onto AmyNet and you do a search for Amy SSL, you're going to find Amy SSL 4.2, which delightfully does not work with iBrows 2.4. You can install it, but it's not going to it's not really going to support it. What you're going to want is Amy SSL 3.6. It's harder to find, so I'm going to put a link in the description for it, and I'll, I also have a link for that on my website. Now, I have had better luck installing Amy SSL 1.1, then 2.2, then 3.6. Okay, that's worked best for me. From what I understand, you probably should be able to just install Amy SSL 3.6, but when I did it, there were still some problems I had. These are very simple and easy to install. Install Amy SSL. I'm going to, I can't pretend to install. Accept the license. Tell it what CPU you're using. Replace certificates, keep installed certificates. I've already installed it, so I'm going to keep the installed certificates. It's going to add an Amy SSL path and it's going to assign something to user startup. And if we had really installed the certificates, it would have thrown all the certificates in there. Now, we're not done yet. There's something critical that has to be done once Amy SSL is installed before iBrowse works for you. So I've created this uh, little list in Pro right here. Now, we need to do this from a shell, from the CLI. Make dir env colon amy ssl, hit enter. Set env amy ssl forward slash ssl underscore client underscore version space tls1, hit enter. Copy env colon amy ssl and vark amy ssl basically we're assigning some variables here we're copying them over to um, env and v archive this we only have to do one time and one time only once this is done once you've entered these three shell commands we're done and and amy ssl is working properly if you just install amy ssl and don't do these three shell commands, it's not going to work properly. Now let's actually go online. Uh, yeah, yeah uh, I, I, I'm Thomas Moore. Yes, that's exactly it. Um, so, eyebrows, actually quite a beautiful little interface. Of course, our favorite website, AmyNet, uh, comes up just beautifully. And this is one of the most important reasons that you want to be able to get on the internet on your Amiga is so you can access AmyNet and easily download things right to your Amiga. Um, all of these are going to download uh, fairly quickly. Uh, here's a nice disk magazine, number seven. 1.5 megabytes. Let's see how quickly this downloads. So you can see that was a 1.5 megabyte file and that was uh, downloaded in maybe what three four seconds. Uh, pretty speedy for an Amiga. Uh, now this can handle, now that we have Amy SSL involved, most websites. We can load Gmail just fine on here. Hope I don't have anything incriminating. Hey, new reply on my. Uh, Website, how nice. 
Igor Ionov has subscribed to you on YouTube. Thank you, Igor. I appreciate that. Uh, ooh, David Stevenson has subscribed to you on YouTube. Thank you. Mark Reckle, what a nice guy. All right. So all of these actually work and actually function. You can get right into your email, read it, do what you need to do. Now, this is why I don't have uh, YAM loaded on here. Um, because I use Gmail for everything and it works absolutely fine. Now let's take a look at some of our other websites that we use. Amiga.org. See how this looks. A little slow in loading, but that's okay. It is fully browsable. Amiga equipment to a good home. Right, send it to my home, I'll take it. The great resource is English Amiga Board. I'm sure that everybody on here has been on the English Amiga Board at least one or two times a day. Uh, great resource, friendly people, really kind, really thoughtful. A um, couple of jerks on there, but uh, yeah, we all know who they are. And the uh, site comes up just fine, loads the graphics okay. Now, the hardware to get online on an Amiga. If you've got a big box Amiga, just do yourself a favor. Buy the individual computers, XSurf 100. It is an incredible networking card. 100 base T, fast as all get out, and it has a header on it for the Rapid Road USB adapter that I went over a couple of weeks ago on this on this show. Just just buy it. 120 bucks. Buy it. Don't even argue with me. Just buy it. Um, if you have USB on your Amiga, it is possible to use a USB networking card, not a USB wireless card. Those never. I can never get those to work. But a USB networking card, it's possible to get those to work not as easy as you might think because it does require some older hardware to do but it is possible to use that uh, if you've got an Amiga 1200 or 600 uh, a nice PCMCA wireless card has to be the 16-bit of course these are available from Amiga kit they sell them with the EasyNet software not this brand this is an, a, a different brand but as long as it uses this prism chipset they work beautifully still commonly and easily available. You can also still get the hardwired Ethernet cards in PCMCIA for your Amiga 600 or your Amiga 1200. I use a wireless one, I never have a problem. It just works perfectly every time with my Amiga 1200. Uh, now, I do enjoy the browsing experience on my retargetable graphics Amiga 4000 better than I like it on my Amiga 1200. I have uh, a better experience uh, you know with an 800 by 600 and 16 million color display than trying to use eyebrows in 256 colors AGA so I just use my Amiga 1200 online just to download files when I need to I don't use it for any kind of browsing or anything like that but uh, it's worth it it's worth getting online with your Amiga uh, it's it's worth investing the time it's worth investing the 25 bucks in roadshow to support somebody who still is writing amiga software and uh, i think you should do it now if you need help leave me a note in the comments i'll respond in the comments and help you as much as i can on on getting you up and running uh, or you know we can we can interact some other ways i'm on all of the boards amiga.org amiga love uh, english amiga board Facebook groups, you'll find me there under Douglas, uh, you'll see Douglas Compton in there, um, under all those groups, or Dynamic Computing Online. Um, be happy to help you out if you need any help getting your Amiga online. But, that's it for this week. So this is Doug from Dynamic Computing, signing out.